This conference <laughs> will now be recorded. Kind of hit the few highlights, and then what we'll do is have Terry and really Charlie kind of run the show here. Um, so first thing, sorry, my screen there is that you guys are doing great for the month of April. I mean, spring has sprung. We're about 50% of our goal, which we're slightly off because uh, we're in week three. But I, I hear you guys are, a lot of you are calling me and texting me and asking questions. So I think we're, we're on track to hit goals. One thing I would like to say is because you, it's the busy season is if you're calling me or emailing me or texting me, just give me a little bit of a heads up of like what the questions are so I can try to help you faster. Uh, because I, I don't like I'm impatient, so I'm sure you are as well. So just make sure that if you're texting and calling or emailing, you don't say, hey, call me when you get a minute, you know, give me a little bit of a what you need so I can probably either help you faster or get someone else to help you faster. Um, we also know about power hour, it's one to three during the week. You already covered this. The two things I want you guys to realize is the 27th and the 28th, which is the next weekend. So this weekend's Easter weekend. But next weekend on Saturday and Sunday, we're doing a really big open house and Denise is getting all that set up. We've identified about 35 houses that are going to be that can be open. So if you want to host an open house, make sure you send an email to us. so We put you on a list. We are going to reach out to the listing agents and get a list of properties and then put you with a property. Um, we're also going to be printing all the materials like the flyers and the sign in sheets and we're gonna have boxes for you to pick up. So we'll have those available on Friday the 26th, or you can pick them up on Saturday, or you can pick them on, up on Sunday. They'll, we'll have them in the workroom and they're gonna have your name on the box. So you don't have to worry about printing costs. Uh, we also have a raffle for a $100 gift card. We're gonna have raffle um, sign-in sheets. So all that'll be in a box, like a, just a file box in the workroom with your name on it. And you can pick it up starting on Friday the 26th, 27th, or 28th. And then we also have an amazing race. If you've never done this before, it's basically you're partnered with one other agent. And it's fun. You're going to go out in the community and, and give, your, give your business cards to people at the mall to go to. There's a list of things that we're going to have you do. And it just really is a fun day. It should be a sunny day. We're going to start that at 12. We're actually going to serve you lunch right at 12 so you come hungry. And then you'll go out and kind of do the scavenger hunt, fun lead generation activity. And then a home inspector is paying for happy hour at four o'clock at the Shaved Duck, which is a restaurant right here in Midlothian in Westchester Commons. So just want to let you guys know about that. That's on May 2nd. So if you could block your schedule from 12 to four on that. And teams, you guys are doing great with teams. We are going to kind of rework some of the teams uh, and I'll let you guys know about that next week. Birthdays, Frank and Misha, they already had their birthdays. And then um, Terry's going to talk to us about all the multiple offers and all the stuff she's got going on, but she's busy. Uh, Adelia, if you're on the call, you had your first transaction. Congratulations, girl. Good job. And then Kendra, Ann, and Ann both had triple play. So that's it, what I wanted to cover on that. Um, what I want to kind of talk about today is that some people um, are choosing to go with four self And uh, two in particular, Terry and Charlie, have chosen to do that. And so they're, we're going to just kind of ask them some questions. I'm going to ask them some questions at the beginning. Uh, that'll probably take about 15 to 20, eh, maybe about 25 minutes. And then at the end, if you guys have any specific questions for Terry or Carly, uh, they'll be happy to attempt to answer those questions. But I'm going to mute you, everybody on here, except for Charlie and Terry, just so there's no background noise. So take notes. Uh, it's a recorded call. And then write down your questions. So then when I turn uh, the mute button off, you can be happy to do that. I'm going to mute everybody. And then I'm going to unmute this. All right, so Terry and Charlie, can you hear me? Did I unmute you? I can. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah. Okay, good. Yes, I can. Perfect. So I can hear you both great. So, uh, Terry, I wanted to kind of get started with a, a, kind of a little bit of your background. Is how long have you been a real estate agent? Um, and then why did you choose for sale by owners? Is like thing for you to kind of go after leads with. And then Charlie, if you want to answer the same question after Terry. Okay. Sure. Uh, 
Sure. Sure. So I've I've had my real estate license for eight months now and um so it, and it's been a great eight months I have to say. I have learned so much. And the reason I'm going after FISBOs is because this buyer, I mean the sellers are already in the mindset of selling their home. And so they're just trying to sell their home themselves for whatever reason they have not listed with an agent. Um so I have found them to be very receptive to anything that I, I suggest to them to do. And that's basically how I have created these relationships with my FISBO clients. Um, and it's working very well. Yeah, so before I go to Charlie, can you give me, what is the results so far? Eight months calling FISBOs. Did you call FISBOs at month one or you've just picked it up in the last two or three months? What would you no, say? How I, long have you been working on FISBOs? That is a great question. I've been working on FISBO since um, right at the end of October, beginning of November. And basically what I've done is to give them a call and suggest to them that I would, um, I have a buyer and I would like to come view their home before I bring my buyer in and take a look. And if they didn't mind, I could give them some feedback on um, what I thought of the home as a buyer and that it was most receptive. Um, I've tried it a couple of different ways, but that was the most receptive. But yeah, it, I've just been doing this since then. Um, since November, I'm actually listing a FISBO today that I have been working on since November. Um, she just had to get her house ready. And so that's been really exciting to watch this. I've had two FISBO listing um, contracts so far. Okay, so you have two contracts, and then this one is the third one, or is this the second one? Uh, the no, one this you're is listening the second today. One. Awesome, yeah, perfect. This is the one. Good. So, Charlie, give us a take on you. How long have you been in real estate? How long have you been focusing on for sale owners, and why? Why you kind of went the FISBO route for you? Okay, um, I've been in real estate uh, just uh, about a, a little over a year. Um, I started calling FISBOs um, just as a way to, um, you know, have some have some people to call. And yeah. I really, you know, when I started out, I didn't really um, have a real good plan. But I got a listing from a for sale by owner, and I also I had another listing that was going to be a buy sell at the first of the year that fell through um something okay. changed for them but um but also i also something i did with when i first i was like two days with my license i held a house for a fisbo and oh, okay. i actually i actually got my first um buyer closed from the fit now i didn't sell them that fisbo but they sure. worked with me and found them a house and closed them out so that was kind of different but um you know they they get leads as you know you can get leads from that the same as any other open house so and so why did you choose to go the fisbo route at the beginning um, you know you've been a year in you could have maybe done something different why did you choose that um i guess you know, um, I have a pretty large sphere because um, I've lived here a long time, but it takes a while to develop your sphere and and um, actually get good leads from it. And this is, you know, really the way FISBOs are, when you think about it, FISBOs are really people that are just raising their hand up here and saying, hey, I want to sell my house. And a lot of them are just kind of throwing it out there as a for sale by owner just for a week or two, and then they're going to turn it over to an agent. So, right. um, you know, great source of leads. Awesome. So, I mean, I think that, I mean, at the end of the day, does it, it comes down to money. It's probably the fastest way to cash flow. I mean, you, you both have had transactions, Charlie, you enlisting listing and a buyer, and Terry, mm -hmm. you've got a couple of listings. So, I mean, it's giving you... The potential of exposure for more leads too, right? Right. 
So how so many absolutely. days a week do you focus on FISBO? Is it Monday through Friday? Is it you just, that's all you focus on? Do you pick a certain day of the week that you do FISBOs? Give us a breakdown of like your plan from a weekly schedule with your FISBO stuff. Uh, Charlie, if you want to go first, we'll, we'll alternate back to Terry. Okay, okay. Um, I normally, I mean, it depends how many um, appointments I get, um, but I'll usually spend at least two days a week if there's enough FISBOs um, to call and schedule appointments. Um, this week was really good. On Tuesday morning, I came in and I called FISBOs and I got four appointments. So wow, I've awesome. been going. So I've been going on FISBO appointments, and um, a couple of them are really good. So, uh, and one of them had to um, reschedule, but we're getting that one rescheduled. So usually two or three days, I'll do my FISBO stuff. Okay, and Terry, what about you? Do you spend two to three days? You spend more or less time? What do you do on your schedule? No, for me, I have to. Um, plan it out and hold myself accountable for the time that I spend on FISBOs. So I created a chart and I work my way on that chart from my first call to the contract. And I have seven touches um, that you and I, Drew, actually created together where after my first call, I normally go in and call them back a week later. And so I have who I, I need to call a week later um, and then call them about um, me coming back and creating a conditions report for them. And I have seven different touches like that. So with all that I do with my FISBOs, it is eight hours a day, two days a week. So eight but hours, I two am, days. Gotcha. Yes, but I am thoroughly invested and focused on those two days so that um, I don't miss anyone. And I am finding that because I'm so focused in on this particular FISBO um, that I'm touching each and every one, those seven different touches, and that has worked. Good. So it's really, it's been the follow-up that's giving you, and so when you're saying that chart, is it like a, it's a spreadsheet, right? You just keep kind of a, a flow yeah. chart, what you're doing, right? Yeah, okay. it's, it's just, it's a, yeah, it's a very easy, um, it's very yeah. easy. And it, it I just hard. go down and put the tape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how many, so Terry, you can ask this and Charlie, how many FISBOs are you dealing with as a whole, is it 40 to 50 and then you're kind of nurturing in those seven touches? Is it 10? Like what's the quantity of the FISBOs that you that you work with at probably one given time or you know that you're new to old or nurtures? You know, can you have a, a count of how many units of people or houses? Terry, what, what would you say your spreadsheet oh. looks like now? Like size of it? Um, well, it's a moving target really because um it's different sell? in yeah it's different in richmond as opposed to where i'm located which is the chesapeake bay area i mean um rappahannock river pianke tank it's different so i actually have two different listing or two different lists going the one that's in my area i am working on about seven people um right now but there's only two FISBOs when you look online currently. Gotcha. <laughs> but Richmond is a lot different. There's a lot more FISBOs and I'm actually partnered up with, um, yeah, with Scott Clemens. Yeah. Yes, and we um, were working on them together and um, just kind of tag teaming and going in together. And that has been somewhat effective. But as far as my Richmond, currently I'm not working on anyone. Honestly, um, gotcha. because okay. yeah, because the other ones are so, giving you good results. Yeah, the ones in my areas, yes, are giving me the results I'm looking for. And Charlie, you work more. You actually are in Mechanicsville, right? You're kind of in the Ashland, um, okay. actually, Ashland. Ashland. Uh -huh. But do you? So, what's the size of the of the Fizbos that you're working with? Um, like that one given point, how many do you kind of interact with in a weekly basis? Um, Probably right now I'm about um, seven to ten, 
at any one time and and you know and I agree with what Terry's saying about the touches um you've got to be consistent and follow up with with your fisbos um I tend to use the pipeline tool that you gave us drew um yeah. to keep track of those to keep track of those touches um and i'm working hard to make sure i touch them all at least once a week um some of them especially some of the ones i've met this week um i've already had more than one touch with some of them um because they're trying to move along a little faster so it just varies um, sure. how quickly i'll make the touches but right now i'm about seven to ten but um I'll probably raise that up a little bit because you're not going to, every one of them, you're not going to get to list with you. Um, but keep in mind, even if they don't list with you, they may have another need you can fill. They may be looking to buy a house. They may know somebody else. So, you know, there's really a lot you can get from those relationships. So Charlie, do you call every FISBO that's on the list? So you pull it online or you pull it go on Zillow or you use Land Voice. We have multiple kind of resources. Do you call every single one? Yep. Do you cherry pick them and um, say, oh, I like that? Or what's your suggestion on that? Um, I have, I used to call them all, um, but I've gotten now where, uh, especially this time of year, there's um, plenty of FISBOs out there. And I'm trying to kind of focus more so on Hanover County, Henrico, Goochland. Um, actually, I did go to a really nice one yesterday in Forest Hill, um, which really wasn't too bad of a drive. Um, but I'm trying to kind of keep it focused up here. And then up okay. my numbers, if I'm not getting my appointments, I would, you know, expand that out to mid to my actual listing I had was actually in Midlothian so um, and Terry have, do you do the same thing Terry do you kind of call everything or you just call your group you know I know you're having good luck success in the river what's your strategy with targeting the FISBOs for your kind of your seven or eight lead sort you know that you have Yes, I try to call them when they come on the market the first week. Um, I do omit the homes that were flipped by a construction company and they're listing them themselves. I just found that they're really not interested in working with an agent. Um, but yeah, pretty much I call and I also drive around. I find that there are some FISBOs that are not listed in Zillow, but I basically use Zillow in this area. Um, gotcha. I've just found that to be more effective. Okay. Um, so kind of, so you've set the appointments, you know how many you get, the two days that you're prospecting. What do you think are some tips or tricks to get them from the appointment phase to the listing with you phase? Tara, if you want to kind of take that question first, uh, you're taking those two days, you're having those touches. How do we get them from that appointment into signing a contract what is so maybe some tips or tricks or maybe things you've done wrong that maybe that you've learned from that you could share yes yes i can i can t go on all day long about what i've done wrong um but the good part is that you i've learned, learned from, from that, that. Right? Yeah. yeah i've adjusted a few things um it was really shaky at first um and i i didn't want to you know kind of like bang my head up against the wall but then i started the other things started working and I went with them and I enhanced them. But um, my touches are working well. And um, just some of the easy touches are the conditions report where I walk the property and, and tell them from a buyer's sake and I send it to them. And then the following week, I call them and let's talk about it. Um, the following week, I call and ask about how many um, prospects have come through, how many buyers have come through, minus the agents. Um, and they're talking about that. So that's kind of a, a pain for them. Um, and then I, I go into uh, some of the showings that I've had on my listings and what I'm seeing buyers looking for these days. So I'm talking to them about what I know and in a helpful way, not as a, um, a smug way. So I'm still trying to help them. Um, 
Then the following week, I'm calling them about um, if I create a CMA for them, and would that help? Um, and I've gotten a lot of good response from that. Um, then the next touch I go into, and can I o hold an open house for you? And around that touch is when I've converted my two disbos into clients, where they just say, look, I just want you to list this. And they've already had my conditions report, and my conditions report on both of these um, homes were pretty extensive. It was a reason why they were not selling. So they've stepped back and they made the repairs and made the suggestions that I took, but I keep, I still call them um, sometimes weekly, sometimes twice a month. We're still in touch. Um, I'll do a pop by um, and just keep that relationship going until I have the home sold, you know? So. Yeah. And that condition is where you use the, like the template that's on the coaching document section. It's like that Excel spreadsheet or did you create your own? Cause I have one. It, I it, yes. Yes, Drew. I use your, your conditions report. I just modified it a little bit um, based yes. on my environment or based yeah. on the house, but that's a great tool. Yeah. And simple, so, um, but it, it's yeah, it is very tough. So, and I send them, after I create it on the Excel spreadsheet, I understand that not everyone has Excel. So I convert it to a PDF and send it to them through email. Because oh. you have to remember though, most of my clients don't live in the home. This is their second home. So they live yeah. elsewhere. <laughs> Do you give them vendor recommendations? Like say you say the condition, you need to power wash your house or paint, take the wallpaper down. You're giving them wallpaper removing company power washers, right? Is that what you're doing? Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Because a lot of them don't know vendors in our area and they're looking for that resource. So I'm always um, giving them tips and pointers and who I know. Okay. Yeah. So what do you, you said, and I'll try to get to you kind of the same concept, but what, but on the same vein with you, Terry, what is one mistake you've made though, that you said that didn't help you convert, that you go, oop, that didn't work. What do you think? Absolutely. Is, yeah, big one, big mistake at the very beginning. At the very beginning, I was having a hard time actually going in to see the home when I approached them as, would you like to list your home? The script that's in our scripts for FISBOs, the mm -hmm. more um, aggressive approach, that didn't work for me because either they've had four other agents call them or four other agents gonna call them after me. They were not receptive to that kind of conversation. So. After about the fourth or fifth one, I decided that I needed to change my script, and I found the script that worked for me, which was, I have a buyer. Okay. That worked, yeah. Gotcha, perfect. Charlie, what about you? What Does any of that align with what Terry was saying with you? Do you do it differently? What's your approach with that? And then your mistake, maybe a mistake you've learned the hard way that you can share. Yeah, I've certainly made plenty of mistakes. Um, I guess the the main tip or trick that, you know, I don't know if it's a trick, but um, the biggest thing I think people should know that, that, you know, I believe works well with for sale by owners is ask a lot of questions. Yeah. Um, even even when I when I call to and I kind of change a little bit my script this week and I, like I said it was pretty successful um, I called and and first I just call and ask you know is the home for sale and they'll say oh yes it is and you know then I tell them who I am and I'm with Keller Williams and and I say you know I like to keep up with all the homes can you tell me um, a little more about your home and a lot that seems to really open them up because I'm not, you know, coming from a place of, oh, I want to list your house. I want to find out more about it. And so if you ask a lot of questions and you listen and get, and that's the thing I've had to work on where I sometimes want to butt in before they're done talking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But. 
I'm trying to work on that. And if I just listen, they will tell you a lot of things you really want to know about, you know, and, and as they're talking and they get done, then that can lead you, oh, to ask some other questions um, about the home, about, you know, oh, are you, why are you, sounds like a great home why are you moving they'll tell you why they're moving where they're moving you know so you have that motivation um right. but you know i think that's the the biggest thing is to you know ask a lot of questions and also like we talked about the to follow up with them regularly and and i've been guilty of um, going out to see a FISBO, having an appointment, and then maybe doing a look, maybe following up once or twice, but then not being consistent with it. And then yeah. I'll look, I'll, I'll turn around and I'll go, oh, somebody else listed that house, you know. And I think people need to know, you know, really that the statistics are that really only about 7% of FISBOs will be successful selling their home by themselves. So yes. at some point they are going to list with somebody and it might as well be you. So, you know, yeah. go in there with your questions, have your follow-ups ready and, and whatnot. Um, you know, but I think that follow-up, the other, the other thing that, I enjoy about FISBOs because I'm I know there's agents that think you know oh I've you know FISBOs are not very nice or you know they're not yeah they call one and they the guy's grumpy yeah 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 well then sometimes they are but what I've found and especially when I go out to see them and I kind of look at it this way most of them are very interesting people and so you know once you get them engaged in a conversation um you know it's really easy to kind of get things flowing and then you know you can kind of have a plan and and move the conversation towards you know why do they you know how many people have come to see their home and how soon do they want you know you want to make sure i always ask before i go out um, you know, hey, if I could bring you a buyer, would you be willing to work with me? Um, you know, because if they're not, um, you're probably wasting your time. I mean, you could go out to see them, but the ones I go to see, they'll always say, oh, yeah, I would pay 3% if you could bring me a buyer. Oh, okay. Um, you know, so kind of just get it started and do the regular follow-up, I think, is the biggest thing. Awesome. Hey, Deanna had a question for Terry. She said, when you say you have the, I have a buyer and you go to see the house, but you actually don't bring them a buyer, how do you kind of turn that around, Terry? So the traditional script is, hey, I potentially have a buyer in your area. I'd like to preview it, you know, things like that. And then how do you reciprocate? How do you go around that afterwards? Uh, number one, if you don't have a buyer or if you do have a buyer, it's not a good match. How do you kind of rein that in? Um, that's a great question. And I used to ask myself um, because I'm not a very good liar. Um, so I did have buyers that um, I knew in my mind because I've talked to my sphere and they were thinking about buying in the next two to three years or whatnot or thinking about selling. So yeah, potentially I always have a buyer. Um, if I, so, and that I was approach it. Like, the mindset thing, like you didn't want to lie. So you, cause you weren't lying. So you're like, if I really do find a real property, I would maybe possibly find a buyer. So is that what you're saying? You had to overcome that, you, the, the mindset of that you were lying. Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. So it was harder for me if I didn't have a buyer to call them and say, hey, I have a buyer. I want to come see your home. Is that okay? You know, and, and the script goes into tell me about your home and, and so forth. So I ended the conversation with setting up an appointment um, of how I could come into the home and view it. And here in my area, I'm really reviewing the home without the seller in the home. They just tell me where the hot key is. So I don't have that face-to-face -face conversation with them currently right then. Um, yeah, you are the, you're, you have an extra obstacle. Charlie works kind of in the Richmond market where their home is their primary home. 
So you have a vacant property. So you're not even physically getting a tour with the seller. So that's a whole nother can of worms, right? So it, it is a can of worms. And and I have um it when I do FISBOs in Richmond with my partner, um, most of the time we visit the home and there is the homeowner there. And we still talk about the home. I'm taking notes, I'm writing down items that enhance the home, or I'm actually doing my conditions report. But yeah. then I tell them that I'm going to step back at that time and talk to my buyers and give you a call back, which is my second touch. <laughs> so yeah. that allows me to give them a call back in three to four days. And when I do call them on the phone, I talk to them about how wonderful their home is, um, that my buyer is interested in another area at this time, um, that their home has great potential, and then I start on the conditions report. Do you mind if I come back? Um, and I would say 95% of the sellers ask me to come back. Yeah, they would love to see uh, what a conditions report is and so forth. So that's how I'm overcoming. I have had a buyer in mind that I knew it was part of my sphere, and he was just kind of start, starting to look in the area and I knew kind of what his his um, his focus was. And after I saw the home, I contacted him. His name was Dave. And I actually brought Dave back to the home, and we looked at it. So it could work. <laughs> I could right. have a buyer. And you could use those with leads <laughs> from open houses. Those could be leads from open houses. They could be Internet leads where people like things, and you could say, yeah, so – there's lots of buyers out there. I think sometimes we get hung up. We don't have a buyer agency agreement with buyer. Or we don't, they're not pre-qualified. There's prospects everywhere. If you find the right house, right. they'll buy it. So, all right. That, that's very true. Yeah, that's very true. But I also tell them that now that I'm glad that I've seen your house and I like to see all of available homes in the area. And I always have new buyers that contact me. So I'm glad that I've seen it because now I can yeah. talk about your home as well. Awesome. Well, um, I just had kind of one, is there, is there one piece of advice if someone has never called a FISBO before, um, maybe a new agent or maybe an experienced agent is just kind of too intimidated to pick up that 100 pound phone. Charlie, what would be your piece of advice? And then Terry, what would you say to that new agent or that person that's nervous about it? Oops, Charlie? I guess I would, what I would say is, you know, don't overthink it. Don't, you know, don't, there's a lot of time, you know, we think we have to be perfect. We have to know this whole script, you know, just start with calling them. And, you know, like I said, you know, ask them about, you know, Hey, and tell them you're an agent. Say, you know, Hey, can you tell me about your home and see how, but, you know, just, just pick, you know, don't worry about, I don't have all the answers. I don't know the whole script. Just, just call, pick up the phone, call that number. And I w I recommend calling them in the morning. I don't think I get much better results when I call in the morning okay. um, than the afternoon. I don't know why, but just pick up the phone. Don't worry about, I don't have all the answers. Just pick up the phone, call them start a conversation. Hey, can you tell me about your home? I, you know, I like to stay up with all the homes in the area. You don't even have to get into, I have a buyer. I don't have a buyer, blah, blah. You know, I mean, if they, sometimes they'll ask, oh, do you have a buyer? Yeah, I work with a lot of buyers. That's not, right. you know, that's not that's a lie. True. I don't, yeah. you know, and just get into that conversation, listen, um, ask more questions and then, you know, say, you know, hey, what is, is there a time, you know, um, tomorrow that, or today that I could come and take a look at your house and really like to, um, you know, walk through and take a look at it. And a lot of times they'll say, yeah, we can work that out. And hey, you got an appointment. Take it from yeah. there. Perfect. Terry, what would be your piece of advice for a new agent or someone that's kind of scared of it? I would say um, for, for me, as for me and my advice to them is that I had to learn the script. I would say it about four or five times out loud. I would say it to my dog. 
um, I would say it in the mirror and then I would just make that call and I told myself at the very beginning that most likely I'm going to muff up I'm going to do something wrong it's not going to sound right for the first five callers so I gave myself grace um, so I wouldn't beat myself up and I would continue to pick up that phone but I knew that if I called 10 people that maybe one would allow me to come and look at their home I had to start somewhere and so I was surprised that after the second one um, they actually said yes come look um, so it gave me a little bit more confidence to change it up and add to my script and be more personable not sound like I had two left feet um, and just keep going so I think it's just giving yourself grace and, and know that it's hard but you are talking to people that actually want to sell their home that's got to be a lot easier than cold calling yeah well the funny thing is you don't consider cold calling right so you consider it a warm call because they have a, their hand up like charlie said as well so it's interesting there's one mindset that fizbos are cold calling they're strangers you don't know them and both of you i've heard from this half hour conversation is you feel like it's actually the warmest they're warmest they're good people you say they face to face they're very genuine um they want to sell their house so it's funny that we sometimes i guess it's the filter that you look at so, or look through so right the last thing before we kind of open up for questions i would say is you guys have uh, eight months and a year if um what do you think and maybe this isn't even a fisbo this is just life and real estate in the fast lane um what do you think has been the hardest part of real estate for you and maybe if you kind of look back at your first two to three months would you have done something different so what's the hardest part and what's the if you look back the first three months if you would have done something different so Charlie, what about you you're you're a year in yeah. you're looking back at your young three months self what would you mm -hmm. say would you do something different would you not do something different give us a little feedback on that i i would um I, when I started, I was on a team, um, you know, and there were some benefits to that, but um, I, um, like I think a lot of people when they start out, I thought I knew more about real estate than I really did. Um, okay. I didn't, I was, um, I missed some of the first go, when I, my first go round with Ignite. I missed some of the classes because, oh, I'm going to show this house or I'm going to, and I did have appointments, but it didn't lead to anything. They were like sign calls, uh, but, um, and I'm not saying those aren't important, but I think the, the thing I would do different would be, number one, to make it a point to get to all the Ignite classes, and number two, um, when I first started out, I did not um, get coaching with you, Drew. And if I had it to do over again, I would have started coaching when I started um, in real estate because it's been a great thing. So, gotcha. And you didn't. Oh. And you didn't. Tell me I was going to say, say that, I'm gonna that day later. No, I'm just kidding. Tay, what about you? Is, you know, first three months in, what what would you say of your younger self? Um, in real estate would you have done something different what do you think is there any struggles that you would have kind of overcome differently that is that's a good question i have um <clears throat> this plaque up in front of me every day and it says to succeed in real estate i must have client leads it's that simple until i have enough leads to meet and exceed my goals there's no other issue and for oh me God, so i knew that i i'm sorry i love that that's awesome <laughs> So when I pop open my screen in the morning, that is staring me straight in the face. And for me, Drew, I truly beat myself up every day because I did not, <clears throat> excuse me, I did not pick up the phone and I could not call 10 spheres. I just, and, and every day I would say tomorrow, it's going to be tomorrow. And I would find something else that I could occupy, occupy my time to do. But until, and it was about three months, until I figured out where my niche was, um, and Fizbo's was one of them, where I could succeed in and find these leads 
to help me succeed and meet my goals. Um, I wish I would have found them earlier, but I think I had to go through that process to figure it out. Gotcha. Yeah. That's failing forward. And I, no, no failure is actually, well, hopefully a failure isn't a point where you can at least always learn from them. So that's awesome. Well, that's awesome. I have got so many pages of notes, I can't even tell you. Um, what I'll do is I'm going to open this up if people have a few questions. Um, so everybody did. Um, there's a good chunk of people on here. So if you could just say who you are, because we I don't know if we know all the voice voices by heart. Let's kind of say your name and a question you may have, and then maybe specifically who you want to ask the question, Terry or Charlie. So go for it, people. Okay, I'll go first. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, okay good. Um, you talked about your seven touches. Are all of your touches um, a verbal touch when you talk about your seven touches? Or uh, is, do you send a text or send an email? Um, I'm just trying to get an idea of... Um, all the different touches and and how personal they are. Carrie, do you want to cover uh, that one? Yes, and I would be happy to send you my little Excel spreadsheet. Um, for me in my area that I live in, all of my touches are by phone, um, yeah. with the exception of one, which is I send them the conditions report and then I follow it up by a phone call. Um, in the the Richmond area, Mechanicsville, Hanover. Um, I do have my pop ba, which is a personal face-to-face -to -face touch. Um, and then of course that first meeting is face-to-face -to -face touch, but everything else is pretty much over the phone. What is your, what is your pop ba? What, what is it that you give them? Um, I could take a picture of it and send it to Drew. It, I found these light bulbs um, at um, a craft store, and I fill them up with um, some salt, and I have a little card on it that says, would you like to lighten your load? Um, let us brighten your path by listing your home. Then you can okay. relax. All right. So it's, just, it's a little gift thing. And Charlie, do you have a different version with your touches? I, I know what your touches are as well, so the, your touch yeah. Charlie, yours are a little um, bit different. Yeah, I mean, um, I tend to, you know, I would, I mean, I even count, you know, I will follow up with a thank you note. I count that as a touch. Um, okay. I like, I tend to like more personal, either um, usually by phone, but sometimes in person with the, um, with the for sale by owner so that, you know, uh, I, I like, you know, I'm a I'm good interacting with people, so I like to get in front of them if if at all possible in person. Um, just seems like you know, but some of them are phone calls as well. Sometimes it's you know, oh, I'll come over and we'll do a CMA or we'll do you know what it, some of the things that Terry does. So, but neither um, one of you just, do a lot of texting and email, right? So neither one of you do a high percentage of either one of those types of texts, correct? No. No. Yeah, I think that's interesting because I would think almost visually people would think email, 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 or text message. So I, I think people get too many emails, and I, 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 I just don't think people respond to them anymore. Yeah, I, I agree. I think a lot of people, so. a lot of people, but get when so I, much email. go ahead. But when I do, okay. It's what I, on the phone. I do, I'm sorry. One of my touches is that um, I want to do the conditions report. And at the end of the conversation, I ask them to look for my email. Okay. And so you okay. lead them to the email. Gotcha. Yeah. And Terry, I would love to use your Excel spreadsheet. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to send it to me, we can, I can send it, send it That'd out. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Did Love you your presentation too. Did you have anything to add, Charlie? I know I cut you off there. Yeah, yeah. I guess I do do a little some email. Like, um, uh, well, I will. I'll confirm my um, when I'm making an appointment with a FISBO. I'll get their email address, 
and because I have my business card as my signature on my email, so I'll send them an email confirming, and I ask them, you know, if something changes, then you know how to get in touch with me. Um, but one of the FISBOs I did, did this week, um, I offered to do an open house, and he responded on email the next day and said, yeah, we'd love to have you do an open house for us. So, um, you know, I think like Terry, if it's uh, an email that has a purpose and something they're interested in, and you can follow it up with a phone call. Hey, did you get my email? If you don't care back, um, yeah. those things I think are are useful. Awesome. Anybody else have a question before we kind of end? Anybody else dying to ask something? All right. Well, Charlie and Gary, I appreciate your time. I think FISBO, is, it's a journey. I think I focused on four subway owners. I think you'll, I think the overlying message that I heard was keep it simple, uh, just do it and have a follow-up system. Those are the three nuggets that I kind of got from both of you that kind of screamed at us. Uh, so thank you guys for your time and uh, we'll see those listings sell very soon. So. Okay. All right, bye everybody. Thanks for being on the call Thanks. today. Right, thank you. I'll post the recording on Facebook if you want to re-listen. All right, bye guys. Bye.